Families and investigators for decades, the man known as the I-70 killer targeted women up and down the interstate during the early 1990s. But the cold case remains fresh on the mind of a St. Charles detective. He's hopeful someone will come forward. Tonight, News 4 investigator Chris Nagus reopens the file and gives us a look at one piece of evidence that could crack the case. These tin drawers contain files inside the St. Charles Police Department of names that have came up during the investigation. This room is full of thousands of files related to the man known as the I-70, I-35 serial killer. This is a composite drawing that was made from the witness. Detective Donald Stepp says these drawers contain thousands of names, possible connections to a 1992 crime spree that left six people dead across three states, including 24-year-old Nancy Kitzmiller of St. Charles. <laughs> May 3rd, 1992. It was a quiet Sunday. Kids Miller was working at the Boot Village just off Interstate 70 at Zumbel Road. She was alone in the store. According to Detective Stepp, she wasn't even supposed to be at work that day. She was filling in for another employee. At approximately 2.30 that afternoon, she was discovered shot to death in the back of the store. Is there any surveillance video? No, there was not. Were there any witnesses? No, there's not. Do you guys have a motive for the crime? No, we do not. Three years after the murder, investigators offered chilling information. The motive has always seemed to be simply the thrill of killing. April 8, 1992. Before killing Kitz Miller, it was Robin Fuldauer, shot to death inside a Payless shoe store in Indianapolis. Three days later, two women were found shot to death inside this bridal store in Wichita, Kansas. Patricia Smith and Patricia Majors stayed late to wait for a customer needing a cummerbund. Neither would make it home. The case certainly stands out in the fact that, you know, it's a double. I spoke with Detective Tim Ralph of the Wichita Police Department. He worked the case 28 years ago, and it's where authorities got a break, an eyewitness account. The customer the women were waiting late for arrived at the store and saw the man. The killer kind of waited for him to come in the store, and the guy's like, no, nah, no, nah, ain't going to do it. And uh, so he left at that time. This guy could have easily been a third victim. He easily. If he'd, gone, if he'd gone back there, he'd have killed him. From that encounter, this composite sketch was created. But investigators believe the key to solving the case is what police believe to be the murder weapon. It's distinct and looks similar to this. Authorities hope it will jog someone's memory. It's actually a historical remake of an, of an old German Navy pistol. And it's the unusual thing about it is it's, its barrel is long enough to where the, the gun actually has a wooden forearm. Just two weeks after the double murder in Wichita, the killer struck again. This time it's Sylvia Ceramics in Terre Haute, Indiana. The only male victim, Michael McCown. Police believe the killer mistook him for a woman because McCown had long hair from the back. A week later, Nancy Kitzmiller was killed in St. Charles. Over the years, her parents have shared their grief. Nancy was, like perhaps many of the people you know, a, a shy little girl who was coming out and, and becoming successful as a young woman. Four days after Nancy died, Sarah Blessing was shot to death inside this small store in Raytown, just outside Kansas City. It's been over three years, and the I-70 serial killer remains on the loose. As the 90s faded into the new century, the story fell out of the headlines. But for the families impacted, it will never be forgotten. Every single day, you, you think about her. There's no reason not to say anything. It'll benefit society. It'll benefit us. Lots of families are involved in this. Yeah, it's not, it's not just Nancy. You know, there were other people killed. We're not going to give up on this case. We have individuals that are working on this case in several states and several cities. This isn't a state. This is not a case that we're just going to let go to the wayside. Do you believe it is solvable? I believe this case is solvable. And one more clue. Detective Stepp says the FBI has examined the case, and given the geography and the timing, profilers came to a conclusion that might offer help. This case has been looked at at two separate times by FBI profilers. The profilers both believed, both groups, that the killer is from the Indianapolis area. Here we are all these years later. Why does he just suddenly stop? Chris, that's a question I wish I had an answer to. I do not know. Do you guys think he's still around? There's nothing out there saying that he is not alive. I believe he's still alive and out there. I posted this suspect sketch on my Twitter and Facebook pages, along with a picture of the possible murder weapon. And if you have friends or family that live in cities along the route, 
You can share that information on social media. The families of multiple victims have waited nearly 30 years for justice. Anyone with information is asked to call the St. Charles Police. Chris Nagus, News 4, investigates. All these years later, still so many questions in that case. So what message does Nancy's parents have today? We'll watch News 4 tomorrow. The family discusses the hope they still have after all these years. We'll have that story for you tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. Last night at 10, News 4 investigator Chris Nagus reopened the case into the I-70 serial killer. It's been nearly three decades. He's never been caught. Tonight, a new interview with the St. Charles County couple who lost their daughter to the killer. Their message is one of hope. I hope that someone out there comes forward and says something. For Carol and Don Kitzmiller, 1992 will forever be ingrained on their minds. Their daughter Nancy was shot to death while working at the Boot Village of I-70 near Zumbel Road. We've always said that the, the memory of that day stays with us, you know, it's fresh every day, so to speak. And we think about Nancy a lot. We think about her every day. On Monday night, News 4 traced the killer's path. Six victims across three states in 29 days. After killing two women at a bridal store in Wichita, an eyewitness gave police this suspect description. St. Charles police still consider it an active case. Do you guys think he's still around? There's nothing out there saying that he is not alive. Uh, I believe he's still alive and out there. I have thought that um, he was probably still alive. As for Don Kitzmiller, he thinks if the suspect is still alive, he's possibly in jail. The couple hopes the name of the killer is contained somewhere in the stacks of files inside the St. Charles Police Department. And the right person can connect the suspect to the crime. They also hope someone might recognize the very specific murder weapon that could look similar to this. It just seems uh, incomprehensible that there isn't someone out there that knows who did this thing, not, you know, just us, but other people lost loved ones too. The Kitzmillers believe the victims were random. She wasn't targeted. You think he just stumbled upon that place that day? Yeah, yeah. You know, and if it, if it hadn't been that day, it would have been another day and another shot. I think that he's a coward. I think he is um, a horrible person. And I think that for his own sake and his family, as well as all of ours, he needs to come forward at some point in time and, and sooner than later because it's been 28 years. I posted the suspect sketch and the possible murder weapon picture on my Twitter and KMOV Facebook pages. Of course, it's a story we will continue to follow. Chris Nagus, News 4 Investigates.